Today we're going to create an equa rectangular image using a tool called Skybox AI that we will bring into Blender and create a 3D world that looks like this, where we can fly around the scene and record camera actions along the way using my tool called Zform. Ultimately, we can render those frames and turn into a video that looks like this. Let's get started. The very first thing we're going to do is go to a website called skybox.blockadelabs.com. I'm currently on a free tier and I'm still checking it out, but I find it really cool and I have no affiliation with this website. I was just very pleased with the results. So I think I have like 10 credits left for the month. The next thing is go to the Explore tab in the top left once you create your account. Then you can take a look around to see what types of skybox images you want to create. I'm going to pick this one here. It's model three. Their tool is really helpful. It provides exact text that they use to generate an image that looks like this. So I'm just going to use the same thing, which is swirling puffy clouds, dark night sky and dusk and leave the default to M3 above the clouds and click generate and come back when it's done. Once the image is finished generated, you can take a look real quick to get an idea of what it looks like. And I thought this is really good. Then in the bottom right, there's a download button. So you click on the download and you have several options here on what type of download you want. And in terms of the format, you can actually use the 32 bit for HDR and .exr. However, I noticed that the results of both of these didn't look as good as the PNG. So instead I am going to pick PNG and I'll click download and it shouldn't take that long. This is what the Equa rectangular image looks like. Next is opening up Blender and going to Z form and change the input type from image to explore 360. Then opening up the image that we just generated with Skybox AI. Mine is called above clouds. Then scroll down and click on the create 360 degree world button. And there you go. We've created a sphere based on the original image. I'm going to take a look at it real quick. All right. And then go back into front view. Now what I'm going to do is click on the enter immersive view button right here. It will take you into this immersive world where you can explore around. You can use your keyboard to move around. I'm going to type W to move forward like that. And I'll press S to stop. Then I can use my mouse to move left and right. Or look down like that or look up. And even move down by pressing the Q keyboard on the keyboard. Then press E to stop and then press E to go up and move around at the same time. I'm going to press Q to stop going up again. Oops, I'm going down. And then you can press escape at any time to go back to where you started. If you press escape and you can't move around, all you need to do is click on the resume navigation button to start moving around like that. I'm going to click on my keyboard to stop again. Then we're going to record our camera view actions by pressing the record camera path button right here. And now we're going to be able to explore around in the scene. I need to click resume navigation. And then everything that we do is going to be recorded. And that way we can render the frames later and then compile a video. Now I'm going to move forward again. And I'm going to go down and then up like that. And let's take a left. Whoa, go right into the clouds. And let's go down. And now I'm going to press S to stop and then S to go back. And then I'm going to turn to the right like this. I'm going to press W to stop. Now I'm in one place. And then type Q to go down and then W to go forward. You press W again, it'll go faster like that. I'm going to press S again to stop and then move around. Now I'm going to stop recording by pressing stop recording button. All right. And last I'm going to click exit immersive view to exit out of the sphere entirely. So we're back in this place here. Next I'm going to hide the side panel by pressing in on my keyboard and then press zero to go into the camera view 
like this. We're now gonna play the recorded frames. Let me first note that because I was talking a little bit before I started moving around, I'm gonna move the timeline to find out where I started moving around. You can see in the bottom here. So I started moving around about frame 193 area. I'm gonna change the start to 193. One more thing I'm gonna do is turn off overlays in the top right. Then I'm gonna press spacebar to start playing. Everything you see now is purely based on playing the recorded frames on the timeline. I'm not actually using my mouse to move around the scene. Do you know how many frames you have by looking in the bottom right? There's an end and the 1479 is the last frame recorded. All right, I just stopped the timeline. We have one last step, which is compiling our frames into a video. What I'm gonna do is take this last frame that I stopped on, which is 671, and change the end timeline to 671 and hit enter. Then on the right side, I'm gonna expand out this window here, go into the output section, change the file format to FFmpeg video, which is on the far right side. Then expand out the encoding section and change the container value to MPEG-4. Then scroll up just a little bit and change the output directory where you want to save the video. In this case, I want to save it to my download section and I'm going to name it clouds and then click accept. Because we don't have any additional lighting and I want it to generate a video purely based on what the original image looked like, I'm going to go into view dropdown and select viewport render animation. And I'm going to click it. And when I do that, it's going to start generating the video it might take a minute or two, depending on how powerful your machine is. I'm gonna turn off the recording and come back when it's done. That didn't take too long. It took me about two to three minutes. Now it's time to check out the video. So I'm gonna open up the video and play it. And here's our results. Pretty darn cool. In summary, this video was created purely from a static image that we generated from Skybox. We brought it into Blender, turned it into a 3D world sphere. We then explored inside of the world, recorded our camera actions, rendered our camera actions in frames, and compiled it into a video as the very last step. The results might not be professional quality, but I'm pretty pleased how it turned out. I hope this is helpful. More videos to come in the future. That's all I got.